how to flux score well as a beginner. Today I got one of my students here. He just trans, he just transcended from doing overhead stick welding. Now he's about to start working on flux score. So there's a few things uh, to know about flux score wire, especially if you have never welded any type of flux score. This is dual shield flux score, so it got gas. So we're using 7520, 7525 on the gas. And we actually got a Millermatic machine and we got it set up. We're running about 2.9 on the voltage and 263, 263 on the wire speed. And we're using 045 wire. So when you use a flux core, you got two different kind of style wires. You got 035 and you got 045. Normally that's the most typical ones you're gonna use. So as you're getting started, you wanna make sure you got good gas flow. So on with the flux core, I say, at least have it about 30 pounds. 30 pounds between 30 and 40 pounds, rule of thumb, but I start on the low end about 30 pounds, you should be, you should be good. So you wanna get you a, a strap piece of metal to make sure you can run a couple passes, to make sure when you set the machine up, and you're not messing up your material that you're about to work on, you know. So we got this grounded out, all smooth and clean so that way we can run past it. So what we have here, we have a 3 8 um, 3 8 2 inch angle, and we got two of them, and they welded back to back. We tacked them on there so that way we can actually do this flux score in all positions. So we're going to be doing it in flat, horizontal, vertical, and overhead. So we can just flip this. So the goal is, is to build stack beads. So as you started welding, you notice when you first start stacking beads, you'll drop one, you'll tie it into the toe of the next one, you drop that one and tie it into the toe of the next one. It's the same process. The only thing with flux is though, when you from, from transcended from, from stick welding, you don't have to push down anymore. You know how you're holding the rod, the rod always disappears. You don't have to do that with the flux. With the flux, it's coming out on its own. So with that being said, all you have to do is keep your angle and your stick out good. So I would say a rule of thumb to at least have three quarters of a stick out. Three quarters, about what I got here. You can have up to an inch and a quarter, but I wouldn't exceed past an inch and a quarter because it's gonna have, it's gonna have, have um, porosity and stuff get into your well. So you wanna make sure that the gas is sealing it real good. So you wanna keep a good close gap, but you don't wanna get too close. Cause if you get too close, then it's not, the, the shielding gas isn't covering it and you'll end up getting some, some worm tracks or some little holes in the well. So to prevent that, to try to keep a good distance. So once you do that, you wanna make sure you got your dice by your side. Cause these are gonna be your right hand man, like a pistol, pow, you're gonna pull it out. Cause you're gonna use it a lot, fam. You're gonna be cutting wire all the time. So I had to throw that in as a joke. But you're gonna use these all the time. Just like when you were stick welding, you had that, that chip and hammer and that wire brush that was, you know, getting them biceps big. You want to use this one too, fam. You know, kind of like back in the day, they used to have this little deal. I used to see old folks use to strengthen their hands up. They'll do this all the time. And so this, get your hands strong. Yeah, 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 <laughs> you remember you that little deal they'll do? Yeah, 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 so this yeah. pretty much kind of like that, you know, sort of, kind of, not really, but you get me. <laughs> so the main thing you want to do is, just like stick welding, you focus on your travel speed, your angle, and your gap. So, when you're running this for the first time, you want to keep in mind, you want to have, you don't want to have it as, at an extreme angle. You see how I got it like tilted over here? So I'm going to shoot probably a lot of BBs and I'm going to probably lose my gas by shooting it like this. I like to have more of a 90 degree angle, a slight push. You see it's a slight, maybe 5 to 10 degrees. But I don't like the 15 or the 20 too much because it's going to allow pinholes to get in it and trash and can't stay consistent and then plus you want to get it in a way where you can see the whole well and with with the flux keep this in mind slag you drag you push wire so since this is a uh, wire with flux in it you drag it just like you would stick welding same way of stick welding you don't want to push this because you can get uh, slag inside of your well you might not see it and the well might be pretty but when it comes to test and bend it you're gonna fail every time fam so always drag slag so you can drag it you know whatever direction you want to go but you just want to have it in a drag uh motion and you want to make sure you can see what you're doing so i'm gonna run this first one and like i say the main thing to do is you want to make sure your gap your angle and your travel speed just like stick welding so that's what we're going to do
You ready, sir? Yep. main thing you want to keep in mind is when you're using this this flux or me either or if you start like this you want to end like this you don't want to start like this and end like this because it's going to change your it's going to change your angle and it also can mess up when it comes to your travel speed you see that came out pretty well i'm gonna clean it real quick and then we're going to dive into another one. But the main thing is to take your time. Some things happen when you're using flux. Sometimes your gas or on this end, I had some slag still in there. So the slag kind of popped up. And you will see what I'm talking about. So on this end, I still had some of the slag from when we cut it. Use the plasma torch. So some of that slag kind of got into the end. So just keep in mind, cleanliness is next to godliness, but we're practicing. But to just prevent any holes, as you see, you don't see no pinholes in that. I have my angle and my travel speed. And that's what you want to do. You don't want to start fast and then go slow. You don't want to start like this and then go like this. Or start like this and then go fast. You want to keep that same, uh, just kind of like you travel on the freeway. You know, if, if, if traffic is going and everybody riding 75, you going 65, you probably gonna get ran over. You know what I'm saying? So you wanna go with the you wanna go with traffic. You wanna go with the traffic, man. So just keep that in mind. Keep that keep that travel speed the same and just go with traffic. So we're gonna run one more and we're gonna tie it in. And remember, you run the well at the toe of your uh, previous well. Come back, come down here a little bit so I can make sure that I show you. This is the toe for those who don't know, right here. That's the toe and that's the toe. It's on both sides. The, the top of the well is considered the face. So you don't want to start on the face of the well unless you was weaving over top of this. But since we're, the, the best way to, to tie in is to run stringer. So we're going to run a stringer right here on the left side. And then we'll come over here and tie that one in and run one on the right side. It'll get loose. If you welding this flux core and you having problems with, with the slag coming off or you got to beat it, that means you was going too fast or it was too high or you had a messed up angle and it was now in the BBs that come off of it to hold the slag. Right. You know, that makes sense. Yeah. It's, like, it's like you throwing metal on top of the slag and it's kind of holding it down yeah. and now you got to beat, beat it to get it off. Yeah. So yeah. that let you know your angle was wrong or you had it too high or you was going too fast. You know what I'm saying? Or too slow. If you're going way too slow, it can throw extra stuff in there. So you got to watch that when you come to your travel speed. And always get you a dry run. Like if you starting here and you sitting in a spot and you uncomfortable, you know by the time you get here, like, dang, I got to move. Go on and try it before you even start. Do a couple runs to make sure you can start and finish and it still got the same swag to it. You ain't switching it up and getting uncomfortable or nothing.
one good thing I love about Flux, if you take your time, you can see it fill up. So if you look at this well here, if you just look at the slag, the slag is the same size. You don't see it big here or little here. So that gives you a good evidence that I was doing good travel speed. Yeah. The same travel speed when my guy says, so that lets you know that I had good travel speed when it came to it. And all of it turned out the same. And we can just wipe it off like this. So fam, as you learn the flow score, just take your time. But remember, if you start seeing holes or stuff like that in there, it could, it could be from the metal not being clean or you have an insufficient gas or your gas about to run out or your wire. So if you use an old wire on dual shield, it can suck up the moisture from the area. So if you pick up an old roll that been out three, four months in the shop and you say, I'm gonna put it in the new welder and put some more gas on it, nine times out of 10, that wire gonna have some, some, gonna have some problems in it here and there because it's been sucking up moisture. So if you're learning, um, there's nothing wrong with it. That, that way you would know if you just, hey, that's all I got. But once you are, um, if you got the opportunity to start off correctly, just get you open up a new box of wire, start off fresh, fam. And that way you can see the process. But if it's an old wire, you're gonna have a couple errors. So don't worry about that. Now, for those who wanna do the, the self-shielded gas flux core, it's the same process. The only thing that's different, fam, I wanna keep in mind, it's more like stick welding then. You know how when you're doing the 6010, you gotta do the circles or you gotta do back and forth. Now, when you're using the self-shield without the gas, you got to do the manipulation, back and forth or circles. That's the only way you're gonna get the well to perform uh, the correct way. Now, it's the same way with me, with hardwired me. You know how when you're using regular me, you got to do circles yeah. or back and forth. That's when you're gonna get back into the, uh, the manipulating the, the puddle. But on flux core, you can literally stick it in there, go 90 up, side, down, overhead, you just run it and it's just laying there like a 7018 rod, fam. So I just want to give y'all some pointers. Hopefully you'll find this helpful and hey, keep getting your hog on with us. We out.